This episode was originally released as a bonus episode of Real English Radio and is now being released to the public. Enjoy. What's going on, my friend? You are listening to yet another episode of Real English Radio. I am your host, Tony Kaizen. And in today's episode, my friend, I've got a treat for you. You are going to be exposed to the lovely, the wonderful, the sophisticated British accent. I've got a nice, actually two nice little clips for you that I found on TikTok not too long ago. And the the basic premise or the background story that I'll give you before we listen to it is this young man who apparently makes good money moved into a very nice neighborhood where there are a bunch of other people who make good money. The problem or the situation is that he doesn't necessarily look or dress or act like your typical person who makes good money. So he moves into the neighborhood. He parks his car in a place where apparently he's not supposed to park his car. And this older lady from the neighborhood watch basically approaches him and lets him know you can't park your car here. And then she proceeds to explain to him that she's actually judging him based on mainly his appearance. And so we're going to hear the discussion that they have based on the background story I've just given you. All right. Hopefully that makes sense. If you don't know what neighborhood watches, don't worry. We're going to get into all of that in just a few minutes. But as you know, or as you should know, I don't like wasting no time, my friend. So we're going to get right into this clip. And as always, I'll be here to explain all the nouns, verbs, and adjectives along the way. So let's get right into it. Here we go. You're right there, love. You can't park here, darling. What do you mean I can't park here? Well, you've got no parking permit and you'll get towed away. I'm just trying to help you. Okay, but I live here. Yeah. If you lived here, you'd have a residence parking permit. Yeah, but I'm saying I've just moved here. Really? How can you afford to move? <laughs> Somebody well, like you. This is a very nice car. It's filthy. You, you can understand why I was suspicious of you. Well, why? Because if you own this car, you but would not let car. it get filthy like this. But yeah, but it's just a dirty car, that's it. Like, it, it, it doesn't I matter. know, but the people around here will judge you by a dirty car. Okay, so, you so, so you're admitting, yeah, you're judging me because my car is dirty? Yes. Okay, but then you just said that because I'm a young guy as well? Yes. So you're judging me because I'm a young man in a nice car, in a nice area, and because the car is dirty? Yes. And you think that's okay? Yes. Absolutely. And if you don't want to have to explain yourself all the time, one, no, no, get yourself a residence parking <laughs> permit and get your car clean. There are plenty of power and people around here. If you're earning so much money, then why can't you afford to get someone, one of the local kids, to wash this car for you on a regular basis? I can give you some very good contacts. No, 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 but, no, but it's because the car is black, yeah, it gets dirty fast. <laughs> Now, when did you last wash it? No, no, maybe Come a week on ago. Now, when did you last wash it? It's, You're it's too busy your making loads of money. No, no, it's, it's, it's nothing to do with that, but it's none of your business, though, is it? Yes, it is, actually, because I'm part of the neighborhood watch. All right, my friend. Now, I know that some of you might not be so familiar with the British accent, and I'm sure there were parts of that clip that were pretty challenging to understand. So as always, we're going to go back to the beginning of that clip and I'm going to explain some things to hopefully make it more clear. But remember, you do have access to the PDF vocabulary guide. I have provided the transcript for this episode so you can read each and every word that's being said, just in case you can't understand all of it, just listening. All right. So I'm going to go back to the beginning now and explain it bit by bit. Here we go. You're right there, love. You can't park here, darling. What do you mean I can't park here? Well, you've got no parking permit and you'll get towed away. I'm just trying to help you. Okay, so she knocks on his window, right? He, he rolls down the window and says, you're right there, love. You're right there, love. Are you all right there, love? And so when he says love, it's just a term of endearment, something nice to call people, sweetheart, love, honey, baby. Now, typically you call your significant other, your partner, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, or maybe your children. These are terms that we use to refer to those people. But I guess in England, some parts of England, maybe they do it with strangers as well. I'm not really sure, but just so you know. So then he, she says, the older, the older woman, she says, well, you can't park here, darling. You can't park here. So love, darling, baby, sweetheart. Again, they're just terms of endearment. They're being nice to each other. And so then he says, what do you mean I can't park here? And she says, well, you've got no parking permit, meaning you have no license to park here and you will get towed away. So what she means when she says towed away 
And she literally means that the car will be removed from that parking space. Maybe you've seen this. Uh, I'm sure they have this. And this has to be something that exists all over the world, right? A tow truck is a truck uh, that is used for the purpose of towing vehicles away to a different location. So it's a kind of in the front, it's a truck where the driver and passenger sit. But the back half of the truck is like this crane looking apparatus that's used to hook other cars and then tow them or take them away. That's a tow truck. So when she says your car will get towed away, she's saying somebody will come and tow your car to probably an impound lot because you are parked illegally, right? This happens a lot all over the country. If you park in a place where it says no parking or if you park in a handicapped spot and you're not a handicapped individual, Somebody can call the authorities, let's say, and have your car towed away or removed from that spot and taken to an impound lot where you have to pay money for them to release your car or, in other words, give it back to you. So she's basically saying you have no parking permit, so you can't park here because if you do, your car will get towed away. I'm just trying to help you, she says. Just being a good Samaritan, just trying to help you, right? Let me play it again. You're right there, love. You can't park here, darling. What, what do you mean I can't park here? Well, you've got no parking permit and you'll get towed away. I'm just trying to help you. Okay, yes. but I live here. Yeah. If you lived here, you'd have a residence parking permit. Yeah, but I'm saying I've just moved here. Really? How can you afford to move? <laughs> Somebody well, like you. This is a very nice God. car. It's filthy. You, you can understand why I was suspicious of you. Well, okay, okay, okay. So... Moving on, he says, uh, well, I just moved here. That's the reason I don't have a parking permit. So to move somewhere, I'm sure you, you know this, but just to refresh your memory, when he says I've just moved here, he's saying I've just uh, relocated to this neighborhood. So if I move to LA, I relocate to LA. If I move to Tokyo, I relocate to Tokyo, and now I live in Tokyo. So he's saying I just moved to this neighborhood. That's why I don't have a parking permit. And she says, really? How can you afford to move here? Somebody like you, how can you afford to move here? Which is just like, to say that to somebody, man, it's fucking wild. That's some wild shit. So the word afford, how can you afford to move here? If you afford something or if you can afford something, it means that you have enough money to pay for it. That's really all it means. So if somebody says, I can't afford a new phone, it means they don't have enough money. They don't have the financial means to buy a new phone. So what she's asking him is, how can somebody like you make enough money and afford or be able to pay to live in a neighborhood like this, right? And then she goes on to say, this is a very nice car and it's filthy. It's filthy. And the word filthy just means extremely dirty, right? So you have dirty, which is a very general common word, but if it's extremely dirty, disgustingly dirty, then it's filthy. So she's saying, your car is very nice, but it's filthy. So you can understand why I was suspicious of you, right? And when she says, I'm suspicious of you, it just means that she's feeling some kind of doubt. She's uncertain. She doesn't really trust him. And she's suspecting that something is wrong. She's suspecting that he might not be a good person or that he doesn't belong here. And for that reason, he's a dangerous individual. You can't trust him. So to reiterate or to summarize, he's saying, well, I just moved here. That's why I don't have a parking permit. And she's like, okay, um, I don't know if I believe that because somebody who looks like you with a car as filthy as yours, I don't really believe you can afford to live in a place like this. I don't believe you live here. So you, you know, you can understand why I would be suspicious of you. I mean, look at the way your car looks. Look at the way that you look. Look how young you are. You clearly are not of a high enough class to live in this neighborhood. That's what she's communicating, at least if you ask me. All right. Let me go back a few seconds and we'll continue. Yeah, but I'm saying I've just moved here. Really? How can you afford to move? <laughs> Somebody well, like you. This is a very nice car. It's filthy. You, you can understand why I was suspicious of you. Well, why? Because if you own this car, you but would not let car. it get filthy like this. But, yeah, but it's just a dirty car. That's it. Like, it, it, it don't I matter. know, but the people around here will judge you by a dirty car. Okay, so, you so, so, so you're admitting, yeah, you're judging me because my car is dirty? Yes. Okay, but then you just said that because I'm a young guy as well? Yes. So you're judging me because I'm a young man? In a nice car, in a nice area, and because cars do. Yes. And you think that's okay? Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. This is one that I think, this is 
a hilarious thing to say. She says, absolutely. Now, literally, it doesn't make any sense because the word she's saying is absolutely. Absolutely. And there are just certain words that uh, Americans and British people, maybe Australians, I'm sure they do it too. We separate certain words with an intensifier. In this case, the word bloody. Americans don't really say bloody in the same way that Canadians or British people do. But that word is often used to put emphasis on whatever's being said. And it kind of communicates that you're frustrated or irritated about whatever it is you're talking about. So he's, they're going back and forth basically saying, you know, you're judging me because I'm a young man. My car's dirty. You know, I don't look high class. And you think that's okay? You think it's okay to judge me like that? And she's saying, yes, absolutely. Of course it is. So when she says absolutely, she's just emphasizing that she thinks it is absolutely okay. Absolutely. An American might say absolutely, which is much stronger, much, much stronger, if you ask me. But that's our way of expressing the same intensity, right? Or putting the same kind of emphasis on a word, right? Like, go, go clean your blood, go clean your bloody car. Go clean your bloody car. I guess that's what a British person might say. An American would say, go clean your fucking car, man. It's fucking filthy, man. You think, is it okay to judge you? Absolutely, fucking lutely fucking lutely But this British lady is saying, absolutely. All right, let me go back a few seconds. Okay, but then you just said that because I'm a young guy as well. Yes. So you're judging me because I'm a young man in a nice car, in a nice area, and because cars day. Yes. And you think that's okay? Yes. Absolutely. And if you don't want to have to explain yourself all the time, one, no, no, get but... yourself a residence parking permit and get your car clean. There are plenty of power people around here. If you're earning so much money, then why can't you afford to get someone, one of the local kids, to wash this car for you on a regular basis? I can give you some very good contacts. No, 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 but, no, but like. it's because a car is black, gig, it gets dirty fast. <laughs> Now, when did you last wash it? I don't know, maybe Come a week on ago. Now, when did you last wash it? Uh, it's, You're it's too busy your making loads of money. No, no, it's, it's, it's nothing to do with that, but it's none of your business, though, is it? Yes, it is, actually, because I'm part of the Neighborhood Watch. <laughs> uh, part of the Neighborhood Watch. Okay, so he's basically saying... Um, it, you know, it's a black car. It gets dirty fast. You can't really judge me for that. It's, it's normal that my car would be so dirty like it is right now. I mean, it's, just, it's, it's a black car. It gets dirty fast. And so she's laughing as if what he's saying is ridiculous. And she's asking, like, okay, when was the last time you washed it? And he says, maybe a week ago. And she says, come on now, like, give me a break. You know, you're too busy making loads of money. You're too busy making loads of money. So a load of something or loads of something is just another way of saying plenty of something or lots of something. Right. So if you're making lots of money, you're making loads of money. It's the same exact thing. It's just a more colloquial way of saying the same thing. So you're too busy making loads of money to get your car washed. Is that it? That's what she's saying. And then he says, well, it really has nothing to do with that, but it's actually none of your business. It's none of your business, right? It's not your car. And so if somebody says it's none of your business, it's just a very informal way of saying that this is a private concern or this is something that does not concern you. If something concerns you, then it's your business. If it doesn't concern you, it's not your business or none of your business. The same thing. So he's saying, I mean, it's, you know, my car is dirty and I don't have a parking permit, but it's really none of your business. Why the fuck are you all in my business like this? Right. And she says, well, actually, it is my business because I'm part of the neighborhood watch. Now, I don't know if you have this in your country or in your neighborhood, but the neighborhood watch refers to a group of people in a community who have made themselves responsible for monitoring what happens in the neighborhood, for reporting suspicious activities to the police, and they, they say they want to promote safety and security in the neighborhood. So it's basically the neighborhood police, except they don't really have any authority. They don't carry guns. They can't tell you what to do. They cannot take you to jail. They just tell the police if they see you doing something wrong, or they tell the police if they see something suspicious, they tell you to change your behavior or to do this and do that if they think it's putting the community in danger or if it's going to ruin the culture or the safety or the normal way of doing things in the community. That's Neighborhood Watch. Usually, usually it's a, it's a group of elderly people who aren't working anymore. They're retired. 
Maybe their family doesn't come to see them very much, so they have nothing to do all day except like stare out the window and see what everybody else is doing and then report to whoever the fuck uh, at the end of every day or week or some shit like that. That's generally, at least in the States, that's generally neighborhood watch. Like who has the fucking time? You know, but if that's what you want to do. That's what you want to do. But that is the end of the clip. She So hopefully now it's a bit more clear. This woman just, you know, saw that he had no parking permit and saw a few other things about the appearance of his car, maybe what he's wearing and stuff like that. And she says, ah, nah, something's not right here. This motherfucker doesn't belong here. This, mo- this, this boy is not part of me neighborhood. Something, right? Something is suspicious, yeah? I've got to talk to this guy, yeah? Got to tell him he's got to move his car, yeah? I don't fucking know. Anyway, uh, that is the first half of the interaction. And now we're going to get on to part two to hear how this story ends. All right, let me move down in the vocab guide. All right, here we go. I'm going to play part two now so we can continue. Here we go. Uh, but it's none of your business, though, is it? Yes, it is, actually, because I'm part of the Neighbourhood Watch, and I look out for things like this. What are you doing? <laughs> just, just having a sit down. So, okay, so at this point, she literally opens his car and sits down inside the car. Shit is insane. I mean, just, you know, unprompted, no permission, no, uh, no warning, nothing like that. She says... Yes, it is actually because I'm part of the neighborhood watch and I look out for things like this. So really quick, in this case, to look out for something in particular, basically it means that to be vigilant for certain things, right? You're observant of your surroundings and you're looking for certain indicators that there's danger or you're looking for something in particular. So when she says, I'm part of the neighborhood watch and I look out for things like this, she's saying I'm part of the neighborhood watch and it's my responsibility to keep an eye out or to be vigilant for these kinds of things. It's my job to take notice when people like you enter the neighborhood. People with dirty cars and no parking permits who look like they can't afford to live here. And then immediately after that, she just, he rolls up his car window. She opens the door <laughs> and sits down in the car. It's amazing. Hold on, let me start it again. Uh, but it's none of your business though, is it? Yes, it is, actually, because I'm part of the Neighborhood Watch, and I look out for things like this. What are you doing? <laughs> just, just having a sit down. For what I'm reason? Old. Just because I'm old. Oh, now then. <laughs> yeah, well, can you, like, not... Well, you can sit there if you want. It's fine, it's fine, you can sit there. Isn't it fucking amazing how... Um, I'm, I mean, I'm all for giving elderly people respect. Um, But isn't it amazing how just some old people think that they are invincible just because they're old? Because like certain shit that you would do as an 18-year-old or 25-year-old or 30-year-old, like you will get the shit slapped out of you. But just because you're 85, you do that same thing and people, they won't, they won't react the same way. Oh, he's an old man. The same way with children. They treat old people like children. Like if if a child does something that's clearly unacceptable, or rude or offensive it's a child the child doesn't really know any better yet it's our job to teach that child but if you're 85 just being a dick or if you're 85 and you open a stranger's car and sit in their car without permission if you're just if you're 26 years old especially a man you might get shot depending on where you at you know you might get hurt like physically you know what i'm saying but if you're an old man oh it's fine he's just an old man he's hot you know just is what it is I just think that is, I think that's strange, man. That's strange. Anyway, let's continue. Just because I'm old. Oh, now (laughs) then. Yeah, well, can you like not, you can sit there if you want. It's fine, it's fine, you can sit there. You can sit there. How's your day going? My day's not going terribly well. Well, why? What I think I'll do, though, if you're so sure that this is your car... This is my car, I yeah. No, but, you know, I've got a local pick. If you're so sure that this is your car, which, and maybe you didn't understand that, what she's communicating is she still doesn't believe that the car he's in is actually his. She's implying that he stole it, all right? Because, again, it's filthy. You don't look like you can afford to live here. This is a very nice car. And so if you are so sure that this is yours, blah, blah, blah. 
you would only say that if you're implying that you don't believe it's actually his. You know what I mean? So if you're so sure that this is your car, I'll tell a local kid to come and wash it. Let me play it again. <laughs> yeah, well, can you, like, not... Okay, you can sit there if you want. It's fine, it's fine, you can sit there. You can sit there. How's your day going? My day's not going terribly well. Well, why? What I think I'll do, though, if you're so sure that this is your car... This is my car, I'll yeah. Go, no, but, you know, I've got a local kid who comes and washes cars regularly. You've got, you've, you've got a local kid? Yeah. What does that mean? I've got a nice young man called Jason who comes around and washes Little my car Jason. once a week. Yep. So can I give your number to Jason and he can, you know, if you just give me a phone number, I'm sure you've got a card. How, how old is Jason? 19. Oh, okay, okay. He's at university. He's studying sociology. Okay. But for a, a speci uh, just to keep himself going and so he doesn't get to be a drain on his parents, he goes out and washes cars at the weekend. I give him a fiver and he does a really good job with mine. I'm or okay. Or 10 quid if he wants to do the inside as well. <laughs> no, I'm okay. <laughs> okay, so moving along in the conversation, you know, she's saying, if you're so sure this is your car, I'll give your phone number to a nice young boy. His name is Jason and he washes cars once a week. And so then she said, what did he say? How old is Jason? He's 19. Uh, he's at university. He's studying sociology. Uh, and just to keep himself going so he doesn't get to be a drain on his parents, he goes out and washes cars at the weekend. So there's a, a lot I want to explain. When she says he washes cars just to keep himself going, really what she means is like sustain himself. That's really what she's saying. Um, in terms of his finances, basically, because um, you have to pay to survive, right? You buy food, you pay bills, for you know, you pay for train tickets or gas or whatever. So, you know, when we say to keep yourself going, it just means on the path of life, in the game of life. You know what I mean? So to keep yourself going, to sustain yourself, same thing. And then he said, she said uh, he does it just to keep himself going so he doesn't get to be a drain on his parents. Now, this is like a... A colloquial way of speaking, but if something is a drain, in this case, it's like a burden, you know? Imagine having a really, really big and heavy rock on your back as you're trying to walk down the street. I think about that figuratively. That big ass rock is your child, you know, who needs to rely on you for financial support and all these other things. It's a burden, it's a big responsibility that makes your life more challenging, right? And so a drain is the same thing, except it refers more to. The idea of something being sucked out of you. So if you think about a sink or a shower, all the water exits through the drain. And so if this kid is a drain on his parents, he's sucking all the energy and time and money out of his parents. And so in order not to be a drain on his parents, he washes cars to keep himself going, to sustain himself. He goes out and washes cars. And so when she, when she says he goes out and washes cars, it's just... Uh, to go out in this case, to do something, it's just a phrase that means that he leaves the house to engage in some activity. That's all it means. Because she could easily say he washes cars at the weekend. But when she says he goes out, it, it kind of implies the idea of leaving the house and venturing outward into the neighborhood or into the world to do something. Just a colloquial way of speaking. All right, let me play it again. University. He's studying sociology. Okay. But for a, a speci uh, just to keep himself going, and so he doesn't get to be a drain on his parents, he goes out and washes cars at the weekend. I give him a fiver, and he does a really good job with mine. I'm okay. Last thing I forgot to explain. I give him a fiver. <laughs> I give him a fiver. What she means is like a five dollar bill, or I guess uh, five pounds in England. So a fiver just refers to five pounds. Let me play it again. And wash his cars at the weekend. I give him a fiver and he does a really good job with mine. I'm or okay. Ten quid if he wants to do the inside as well. Okay, now they kind of talked over each other at that point because she says, I give him a fiver or five pounds and he does a really good job with mine and 10 quid if he wants to do the inside as well. Now, this is another thing that you'll probably only hear in, in England because I've only ever heard English people say this. The word quid, Q-U-I-D, quid. It's like slang for a British pound. One, like what for us would be one dollar, for them it would be one pound. So we would say a buck, like five bucks, ten bucks. They would say ten quid, five quid, ten quid. So she's saying, I give him a fiver or five pounds and he does a good job. I give him ten pounds or ten quid if he wants to do the inside and the outside. All right.
All right, cool. Let me go back and we'll continue. It'd be a drain on his parents. He goes out and washes cars at the weekend. I give him a fiver and he does a really good job with mine. I'm I'll okay. Take pity if he wants to do the inside as well. I'm okay. You should really. No, no, really I'll go wash think it. About I'll, it. Go, I'll go wash it, yeah, but I'd rather get it washed properly than from Jason little boy Jason. Jason does a terrific job. You should see the equipment he's got. Yeah, I know, but like little boy Jason, like it, it just doesn't sound promising, does it? Listen. All right. So he says, little boy Jason doesn't sound promising, does it? Little boy Jason doesn't sound promising. In the case, if something sounds promising, this is an adjective, it just means that it shows a sign of potential or a signs of success. It sounds, that, uh, it sounds like it'll be something favorable to me. So if this kid has a promising future, it means that based on the evidence, based on what we've seen from this kid, it looks like his future is going to be very bright, very positive. He's going to have lots of success. It sounds very promising. Okay. So he's saying, you know, this little 19 year old kid washing cars for five pounds doesn't sound very promising. It doesn't sound like that's going to go very well. I'm okay. I'm going to pass. No, thank you. Right. Dan from little Jason boy Jason. Does a terrific job. You should see the equipment he's got. Yeah, I know, but like little boy Jason, like it, it just doesn't sound promising, does it? Listen, I'm an old lady. And if you've got so much money that you could afford a car like this, you could afford 10 quid a week to keep it really nice. I love I'll see you in a bit, yeah? Yes. Yeah, if I see you again with a dirty car, though, I will stop you because I'm a member of the local community watch. Yeah, exactly. Why? Jesus Christ. And then she slams his fucking car door. She slams the shit. Boom! She doesn't close it gently with respect. Just slams that shit as if to say, fuck you. Or at least that's how I took it. Um, and that goes back to what I'm saying. Like, there's just certain shit that old people do that I feel they only do because they have an intuitive understanding that I'm old and nobody's going to do anything to me. Whereas if 50 years prior, when they were 35, doing that same shit, especially as a man, you would get the shit slapped out of you, bro. You know what I mean? Open my car. Get in my fucking car. I don't even know you. You open the door, get in my car. Tell me what I need to do with my fucking life and my money. And then when I say no, you get out and slam my car door and walk off. Nah, bro, we're going to have to handle that shit. That is just outright disrespect, at least where I'm from. That's just disrespectful. But because it's an old lady, it's okay. I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know. That shit is just weird. Not all people are like this, but I'm sure you've met some old people who are just like fucking assholes, man. You know what I mean? They're just rude and judgmental and disrespectful. And you can tell, you can just tell that it's only because nobody ever comments on it. Nobody says anything. It's just an old man. Just let it go. You know, I'm not with that shit. I don't give a fuck how old you are. If you are disrespectful at seven years old or 70, that shit is going to be addressed. You know what I mean? We need to, nah, nah, bro. Let what slide, motherfucker. Anyway, let's not get off track here, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I don't think I've played this from start to finish without interrupting it. So I'm going to play it from start to finish, and then we'll get into uh, some of these talking points. We'll discuss the uh, what's happened in this interaction. All right, let me play it. But it's none of your business, though, is it? Yes, it is, actually, because I'm part of the Neighborhood Watch, and I look out for things like this. What are you doing? I'm just, just having a sit down. For what old. reason? Just because I'm old. Oh, now then. <laughs> yeah, well, can you like not? Okay, you can sit there if you want. It's fine. It's fine. You can sit there. You can sit there. How's your day going? My day's not going terribly well. Well, why? What I think I'll do, though, if you're so sure that this is your car... This is my car, I'll yeah. Go, no, but, you know, I've got a local kid who comes and washes cars regularly. You've, you've, you've got a local kid? Yeah. What does that mean? I've got a nice young man called Jason who comes around and washes Little my boy car Jason. once a week. Yep. So, can I give your number to Jason and he can... You know, if you just... Give me a phone number. I'm sure you've got a card. How, how old is Jason? 19. Oh, okay, okay. He's at university. He's studying sociology. Okay. But for a, 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 just to keep himself going and so he doesn't get to be a drain on his parents, he goes out and washes cars at the weekend. I give him a fiver and he does a really good job with mine. I'm I'll okay. I'll take pity if he wants to do the inside as well. I'm okay. You should really. 
No, no, I'll go wash it. I'll go, I'll go wash it, yeah, but I'd rather get it washed properly than from little Jason boy Jason. Jason does a terrific job. You should see the equipment he's got. Yeah, I know, but like little boy Jason, like it, it just doesn't sound promising, does it? Listen, I'm an old lady. And if you've got so much money that you could afford a car like this, you could afford 10 quid a week to keep it really nice. I love I'll see you in a bit, yeah? Yes. Yeah. If it's... I see you again with a dirty car, though, I will stop you because I'm a member of the local community watch. Yeah, exactly. Why? Man, fuck the neighborhood watch. That's what I would have said. Um, fuck you and the neighborhood watch, lady. <laughs> All right, y'all. Hopefully it wasn't too difficult to understand. I know the British accent is quite a challenge for most people learning English. And depending on the region of the UK that the person comes from, it's even a challenge for some Americans. Don't even get me started on the Scottish or the Irish, right? It's just a challenge. It's so different from what we know here in the States and what most people know, because a lot of people consume American content in media and culture, movies, music, etc. So I'm sure the American accent is much easier to understand than the British accent. But like I said, you got access to the PDF vocabulary guide. You can read the transcript, read the explanation, see example sentences with the vocab and all that good stuff. All right. Because it is um, something that you should be exposed to and understand. Well, you know, Americans aren't the only ones that speak English. We just speak it the best, you know. Um, <laughs> anyway, let's move on to some some talking points related to this clip. The first one is the idea of minding your own fucking business. Like what exactly is the difference between curiosity and intrusion? You know, if somebody new moves into the neighborhood, naturally you might be curious, who is that person? Where are they from? Why are they driving that car? You know, what do they do for a living? What brought them to the neighborhood? These kinds of things come from a place of curiosity. But when you walk up to a complete stranger, and say, listen, your car is dirty as fuck, you need to get it clean. Are you sure this is your car? That's intrusion, you know what I mean? Now you're putting yourself in a situation where you are judging and criticizing somebody that you don't even fucking know. You know what I mean? Like, who the fuck are you, lady? Trying to tell me to wash my car, wash your fucking face. You know what I'm saying? It's like, when it comes to minding your own business, the idea of of being nosy I guess changes from culture to culture. And just in case you don't know, somebody who is nosy, N-O-S-Y, you'll also see it spelled as uh, N-O-S-E-Y. Nosy is just like the dictionary says, to be nosy means to show too much curiosity about other people's affairs or other people's lives and situations. And I guess that does make sense. But somebody's nosy, we use that word for somebody who is always in somebody else's business. They're always trying to get involved in things that have nothing to do with them. Situations that do not concern them. That's a nosy person always sticking their fucking nose in somebody else's business. They're fucking nosy. And so this idea of nosy, I guess, really depends on your culture. Because in some places, it is normal to have something like a neighborhood watch or a group of people who are watching what's happening in the community and making sure certain standards are maintained. Or it's totally normal for your neighbors to be all in your business and know everything that's going on inside of your house or with your kids or with your finances. But for me, especially coming from the United States of America, nah, bro, we don't play that shit. You mind your fucking business, you know? I don't know you, you don't know me, so stay the fuck out of my business. This has nothing to do with you. But on the other hand, on the other hand, you could argue that part of keeping a community healthy and safe and maintaining a particular culture and standards for all citizens, you at some point you kind of do have to get involved in people's business. Because if you see, like for example, you're walking down the street in a neighborhood and you see a man who is 1.8 meters tall, you know, let's say 75 kilos heavy, in the gym five days a week, professional fighter, and a young woman who's like 1.5 meters tall, 50 kilos, never fought anybody a day in her life, and that man is beating the shit out of her in the street, you're going to have to step in, you know what I mean? Even if, even if she did something to deserve it, you know, you got to stay, you can't, I mean, how you, I guess I would say most men would feel the need to kind of step in, intervene, and be like, yo, what the fuck are you doing, bro? Even before you know what's going on, right? Because maybe she did something that deserved an ass beating, we don't know, but just to see that, 
when there's clearly a physical uh, advantage, it's clearly enough. It's not, you know what I mean? It's not a fair situation. You're going to jump in to protect that woman just instinctually almost. And so in that case, you are getting in somebody's business. But in that case, it's kind of justified because, I mean, I don't even feel like I need to explain it. It's just the same way, even if it weren't a woman, if it were a kid, right? Even if it were a kid, we're talking about protecting people who can't protect themselves. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Not that, I mean, there's plenty of women that can beat the shit out of some guys. I know that. But you get what I'm trying to say. Whether it's a woman or a child or a small man versus a a drastically larger man. Somebody who's clearly at a disadvantage and is, has no chance of defending themselves, in that case, you might feel inclined to get involved, right? To get in somebody's business, even though you don't know what's going on. So it really depends on the situation, right? It depends on the culture, because there are other people that I know personally, even if it's a woman getting the shit beat out of her in the streets, they are not going to intervene. Why? Because it's not my business. I don't know what's going on. Maybe she deserves it. Maybe she doesn't. But even if she doesn't deserve it and I get involved, there's a chance that I get the shit beat out of me just because I was trying to intervene. And I don't want to get the shit beat out of me. So I'm going to mind my fucking business. You know, there are other cases. I've heard stories told to me personally. There's actually I knew a guy one time. He saw a situation just like that. Oh, a man beating the shit out of a woman, his girlfriend somewhere in the street. He tried to get involved to stop this man from beating the shit out of this woman. Guess what happens, my friend? Can you take a guess? The woman who was getting the shit beat out of her by her boyfriend teams up with her boyfriend to beat the shit out of the guy who intervened to protect that woman. Let me say that again. A man was beating the shit out of his woman. A second man tried to intervene to protect that woman. The woman then joins the same team as the boyfriend who was just beating the shit out of her to now beat the shit out of the man who tried to intervene because he needs to mind his own fucking business. And this girl was basically saying, you don't attack my boyfriend. You don't put your hands on my boyfriend. So because you're trying to hurt my boyfriend, now I'm going to try to hurt you. All because he didn't mind his fucking business. You understand? So it's a com- it's complicated. You know what I mean? Do I get involved? Do I not get involved? Where does the line of somebody's personal boundary start and stop? I don't know. I don't have the answer to that. I guess it's on a case by case basis. You got some general guidelines based on your culture. But other than that, you know, you got to make a decision in the moment. What are, what are we going to do here? You know, I might have told this story on the podcast before, but I remember when I was in Brazil a few years ago. Me and some people I was uh, renting a house with, we were leaving the beach and waiting for an Uber to take us back to the house. So we're standing on the sidewalk, tons of people around us. I mean, it's the beach, Saturday afternoon, everybody's having a good time. And there was this woman with her daughter uh, walking toward, not towards us, but in our direction, just walking down the sidewalk. And I could just, she was talking quite loud. So I could understand, I could hear and understand what she was saying. And she was asking her daughter, where are you going to pee? Where are you going to pee? Where are you going to pee? Because her daughter had to pee. So where are you going to pee? On, on se vai mija, filha. On se vai mija. Right? Where are you going to pee? And so I hear that. And I just, I don't know why, but I turned around to see who was saying it and what she looked like. And I shit you not, as soon as I turn around, as soon as that woman finishes the question, where are you going to pee? This little girl who was no older than six years old squats down on the sidewalk she pulls down her panties she squats down and pisses right there on the sidewalk in broad daylight people and literally this is it blew my fucking mind she said where are you gonna pee her daughter didn't even respond she just pulled her panties down and started pissing on the sidewalk less than a meter from where i was standing just pissing like a dog I'm sitting there looking at the, I'm I'm sitting there asking myself, is anybody else seeing this shit? And of course, everybody sees the shit. We're in a public place. There's hundreds of people walking past and nobody said anything. They just kind of walk around her and go on about their day. And I'm just looking like, what the fuck is going on here, man? It's like, you know, if if usually you have the decency to go to like an alleyway, the side of a building or something like that. No, 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 no. I got to piss. 
There's no bathroom. I'm pissing right here, right now. Because fuck it. Why not? And that's one of those situations where it's like, okay, do you... Because that is clearly not cool, bro. Clearly. that's in, First of all, you'd expect that from like a young man. You know, it's much easier for men to piss anywhere than it is for a woman to piss somewhere. And so like, when you think of a young lady... Not saying that it's okay when men do it either, but you know, it's just more, it's much more common. I've never seen a young lady piss in the street like that, dog. So it just blew me away. It really did. It really did. And the fact that her mother, like, when she said, where are you going to piss? The girl squatted down right there and pissed. And the, the mother didn't say anything. But immediately after that, her mother had a look on her face like, oh, okay, problem solved. You know, <laughs> why didn't I think of that? Just piss on the sidewalk where we're standing, you know? And so I was looking around at everybody else, like, okay, nobody else is reacting to this shit. I guess I shouldn't say anything because I don't know what how things work here. This is in my country, not my culture. Maybe this is normal in this city. I don't know, man. It's my first time here. I don't fucking know. So I just turned around and went on about my day, just minding my business, you know? But internally, I wanted to be like, excuse me, ma'am, do you understand that your child is not a dog and that this is a public place and that it's not okay to piss? on the sidewalk where the rest of us have to walk. You know, it's kind of strange that you feel comfortable letting your daughter squat down butt naked and piss in the street in front of all these adults. Half of them are men. It's kind of strange, don't you think? That's what I wanted to say. But I just minded my fucking business. You know? Just minding my business. So it's like, yeah, what do we, what do you do there? And this has nothing to do with the clip I just played for you, obviously. But this is where my mind went when I was thinking about um, the idea of minding your business. You know what I mean? Another thing that, uh, that's interesting to consider from this clip is the, the difference between what is known as the neighborhood watch, the community watch, right? The group of people who are watching out for danger, making sure everybody's safe, no rules are being broken. So the difference between a neighborhood watch and a fucking snitch, what's the difference? And maybe you don't know what snitch means snitch is slang for somebody who um ah somebody who informs the authorities that somebody else has done something wrong and the authorities could be the police but it could also just be your parents it could be your boss it could be anybody so if you're at home you got siblings you're 14 you got a 7 year old little brother and he sees you break something in the house that you're not supposed to break obviously or he sees you sneaking in at three o'clock in the morning when you're supposed to be home at midnight. If he tells your parents that you did that thing, he just snitched on you. So snitch is a noun and a verb. S-N-I-T-C-H. Snitch. So to snitch on somebody means to tell on somebody, which means to tell the authorities that this person has done something that they weren't supposed to do. They broke a rule or they, they, they broke a law. That's what it means to snitch. And the person who snitches is a snitch. So when you think about neighborhood watch, it's the same fucking thing. The neighborhood snitches sitting there looking out the fucking window to see, oh, his car is too dirty. That's a violation. Oh, no. Is he still smoking a cigarette in 2023? Doesn't he know that the smoke goes up to the ozone layer with the global warming problem? Making the atmosphere hotter? That's a violation. I've got to call the authorities. That is just mad, love. You can't do that. You can't do that. It's a fucking snitch, bro. It's the same thing. What's the difference? What's the difference? I see no difference. The only difference is the context. You know what I mean? Typically, like this, the word snitch is thrown around much more in the criminal environment. So if you rob a bank and you do it with three or four other people and one of them collaborates with the police, like you guys get caught. You don't get away with a robbery. And then one of them collaborates with the police and says, it was his idea. He orchestrated it, blah, blah, blah. And he snitches on the rest of you. Or maybe a witness who saw the robbery snitches on you and tells the police who you are, where you're from, where you live, blah, blah, blah. That's not acceptable. You don't snitch, right? You don't fucking snitch. You don't talk to the police. We don't talk to the police in this neighborhood, son. All right? Snitches get stitches, motherfucker. That's an old saying that we had when I was in school. Maybe when my parents were in school, too. I don't know where it comes from. But the, the phrase snitches get stitches basically means if you snitch, if you tell on me, I'm going to fuck you up. I'm going to beat you so badly 
that you are going to need stitches, right? Like if, you know, maybe you hit your head or something, you get hit so bad that your skin literally breaks open very drastically and they need to take some very fine thread and close the wound with the the thread. Those are stitches, you know what I mean? So uh, snitches get stitches. I'm going to beat you so bad that you need fucking snitches or stitches if you snitch on me. Snitches get fucking stitches, homie. So you better keep your mouth shut. All right. No difference between a snitch and a member of the neighborhood watch. You know, no fucking difference. But I will say I do understand the value. I do see the value in having a neighborhood watch because you want to keep your neighborhood safe. You don't want a bunch of fucking hooligans running around your neighborhood, especially if you got kids and you want to let them play outside or you want to be able to walk through your neighborhood at night without worrying about whether or not you're in danger. A neighborhood watch is is valuable. You want eyes and ears around the neighborhood, making sure everybody's safe, making sure there's no suspicious characters, no rules being broken, right? That's positive. That's valuable. I understand. But going back to the the idea of minding your business, it's kind of a, a gray area. It's not necessarily black and white. Like it's always binary zeros and ones, black and white, yes or no. There's a gray area in between where it's like, mm, maybe I should get involved. Maybe I should mind my fucking business. I don't know. And since it's one of those things where you have to come to a, a consensus and say, these things are acceptable, these things are not. And even once you come to a consensus, there's always people who disagree with the consensus, so there's always going to be problems. You know, same thing with laws. There are certain laws that get voted in, people vote, and now it becomes a law. And there's always going to be people who disagree with the law. And then it's like this weird, you know, situation. You know what I mean? Whenever there's a community of people, there's always going to be issues like this because it's very hard to get everybody on the same page about what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. What is your business and what's everybody's business? You know what I mean? But to me, there's no fucking difference between the neighborhood watch and a snitch. Now, I'm not saying that sometimes snitching isn't justified, you know? Because really, like, the idea of no snitching, that comes from, like, that comes from people who are involved in criminal activity. It became popularized through movies culture and and media and shit like that and then regular people who've never committed crimes in their lives are saying shit like snitches get stitches you know what i mean but it really comes from people who are committing crimes and saying if you if you tell the police what i've done i'm gonna fucking kill you basically but um it kind of made its way into popular culture and now we use it for all types of situations like i said your little brother snitches on you or your coworker snitches on you you know what i mean so um I don't know. There are some times when obviously telling the authorities is the right thing to do. I mean, we're not fucking gangsters. No reason to keep our mouths shut if somebody's done something wrong that's hurting other people, um, making the neighborhood unsafe, making the workplace unsafe, whatever. There are certain times when the, the authorities need to be spoken to. I can agree with that. But where do you draw the line? Where do you draw the line? You know? The other thing is uh, judging people based on their appearance. This is another issue that is just, I think, part of human nature. I really do. I don't think we can say people are evil um, just because they're judging other people by their appearance. I think all of us do that to a certain extent. We like to pretend that we don't because we want to seem like we're good people, but we all make judgments based on people's appearance. We all do. Now, obviously, it's our responsibility as, as people and citizens to... Be aware of the fact that we make those judgments, but not hold those judgments against those people that we don't know. So what I mean is getting back to the context of the the video clip. Just because this person's in the neighborhood without a parking permit and the car is dirty and they look like somebody who can't. First of all, I mean, to even say some shit like that, you look like you can't afford to be here. Your clothes are not nice enough. Your, your, your face isn't clean enough to make me believe that you have enough money to live here. You know what I mean? Um, I forgot what I was saying. Damn, I forgot what I was saying. But I do remember the idea of what I was trying to say. It's like, I think it's uh, understandable that people will make those judgments. But just because we perceive those things doesn't mean... 
that we can assume they're true. Obviously, just because he looks like or just because he doesn't look like my idea of somebody who can afford to live here or my idea of somebody who's not suspicious doesn't mean that he can't afford to live here and that he is suspicious. That's not what it means. That's just what I'm perceiving. So, yeah, I'm making those initial judgments, but I can't hold that against somebody I know nothing about. That's when it, that's when you get into the territory of doing something wrong. I think making judgments is part of human nature, but acting on those judgments or taking those judgments and using them as if they're just the truth, just because you say they are, that's different, right? So, yeah, man, I think uh, it's normal for us to be influenced by our first impressions of people because that's all you have in the beginning. What do they look like? I haven't heard them talk. I don't know what they do for a living. I've never met them. So all I have is what they look like. And we're constantly trying to seek certainty about our environment, about our experience, about what we think and what we feel. So in the search for certainty to feel safe about ourselves or within ourselves, we take what we see and try to make assumptions, right? He's wearing these shoes. He must be from this area. He's got this skin color. He's this tall. He looks this strong. He talks with this accent. He drives this car, blah, blah, blah. And we try to use all this information to arrive at conclusions just so we can feel more safe, satisfy our ego. You know, I think that's human nature, man. But obviously it is, like I said, our responsibility to be aware of our nature and use logic to combat our own nature. And a lot of people just don't do this. As we heard in the clip that I played for this episode, you know, it's really important, man. This is something that uh, affects us on so many levels, right? People, like when you're trying to get a job, you have to dress a certain way for the interview. You have to talk a certain way, right? Use certain words, try to give a certain impression just so you can get the job, even if that's not how you really talk or how you really act. You have to present yourself in a certain way. So that the people interviewing you get a certain impression and believe you're of a certain standard or class or whatever to be accepted into the group or the social circle, right? I don't know. Not even just in the job market, but I mean, just in general, whether you're trying to enter a friend's group. Imagine traveling to another country where the culture is completely different, you know? I've been to many places in and outside of my own country where I was the only black man present. You know what I mean? You think people aren't judging me based on my appearance? Of course they are. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it, it just happens. You know, it's not just in the job or the work environment. I'm saying in all aspects of life, this affects us, right? Being the only American or the only Chinese or the only, I don't know, Japanese or whatever. You know, people are going to make assumptions just because of that. And sometimes it makes it harder. Or so other times it makes it easier to get involved in social groups, you know? People will assume certain things about you based on what they've heard about people from your country or what they've heard about people who look like you or talk like you. People will make assumptions about your education level based on the way you talk, you know? So many things that we judge each other for um, just because we don't know enough about the person. It's very interesting. It's very, very interesting. And I think a lot of people, this is one of the things that makes it really hard for me to deal with people in general is that so many of us are just so unaware of our own cognitive biases. We're so unaware of the predictable ways that our brains malfunction or the preconceived notions that we have or our own ignorance. We're so unaware of that. And that, that lack of awareness of our own stupidity or our own ignorance or our own toxic behaviors ends up affecting everyone around us and not us. You know what I mean? Like sometimes you just be around people who are so fucking ignorant, so obnoxious, so annoying. They clearly don't give a fuck about how their behavior affects other people simply because they're not even aware of how their behavior affects other people. You know what I mean? It just makes them so much harder to be around. And I'm not saying you have to live to please other people and make everyone else happy. But I think what, what episode was that? 46 or something I talked about like the dude who's on the bus playing his music as loud as he can fucking play it with no headphones. That type of shit. You know what I mean? Or, the, or when you, like, you're at a networking event or a party or you meet somebody at a social event and they just talk and talk and talk and talk and fucking talk and talk and talk and talk. Never listen. You know what I mean? 
never make the conversation a collaborative effort. They're just so unaware of how annoying that they actually are, of how fucking impolite and inconsiderate or boring they actually are. So they just walk around through life like everything's good. You know what I mean? It's just, it, that's what for me makes it kind of hard to deal with some people. It's just, it's hard for me to be around people who have no self awareness. You know what I mean? That's really what I'm saying. It's hard for me to deal with people who don't have self awareness. And I think getting back to the point of this episode, becoming more self aware, more aware of your own behaviors, your own ignorance, your own tendency to judge people based on certain aspects of their appearance or their dialect or their income or the neighborhood they come from or whatever. I think just being aware of those things is really, really important, man. It's really important. And I just get the impression that a lot of people never even take the time to consider shit like that. And I think the the best way to cure yourself of ignorance, especially when it comes to your preconceived notions of other people, is to talk to those people. You know what I mean? So many per- people have preconceived notions about Americans. They've never even talked to a fucking American in their life. So many people have preconceived notions about black people or gay people or women or Chinese or fucking Egyptians or Polish or whatever. And they've never even talked to those people. And when you finally talk to those people, you can humanize them and see, oh, they're just people from a different background, a different perspective on life, a different upbringing, different tendencies, different culture. And you don't have to like all of it. But having an appreciation for it, a certain level of respect or acceptance for it, is better for everybody. And I think that's one of the things that makes the United States of America so great. But unfortunately, in recent times, it also is one of the things that makes America so fucking difficult. You know, because we have this this culture, this ideology of live and let live. You do your thing, I'm going to do my thing. You mind your fucking business and I'll mind my fucking business. You know what I mean? We're very individualistic. We don't have to have the same religion. We don't have to work at the same places. We don't have to do the same shit. You just don't bother me and the people I love and I won't bother you or the people you love. That's it. The problem with that is sometimes, you know, there's shit that's clearly wrong. And that's I can't even say that because that means clearly wrong to me or clearly wrong to some people. Um... But because we have that individualistic culture and that mind your own business mentality, sometimes a lot of like bullshit is permitted just because culturally we have that idea. It's like, well, it's not hurting me. It's not bothering me. So I'm not going to say anything. You know? I don't know if you got, I don't know if you're following me. I don't know if you're following my, uh, my line of logic, my line of thinking, I should say. But, um, yeah, the point, I, the point I was trying to make is like, I think talking to so many different people gives you a certain level of appreciation and respect for different people from different walks of life. You know, it's, you have to like when you talk to different people, you humanize them and it's much easier to accept them, even if they're different or even if you would never live in the same way. But by not talking to them and consuming a bunch of content online that just reaffirms your preconceived notions, you just demonize them. They're not even really human. They're like animals or objects that need to be stopped or eradicated or hated or whatever. They're the problem and I'm fucking Jesus Christ. I never do anything wrong. You know? I think like listening to people's stories, talking to them, having conversations, being a little bit more empathetic. I think you can, it's much easier to resist the urge to make judgments about people you know nothing about that you never even met. You know what I mean? That's the point. I think that's the main takeaway from this clip. Because she didn't even ask, like, where are you from? What do you do for a living? Welcome to the neighborhood. Hey, I I know we don't know each other, but I am part of the neighborhood watch. I just want to let you know how things are done here. Just in case nobody else told you, here's some things you should be aware of. I hope you enjoy. If you need anything, here's my number. Give me a call, blah, blah, blah. She didn't approach it like that. She said, are you sure this is your car? You can't park here. You don't have a permit. Yeah, you. Do. this is not your car. It's fucking filthy, right? If you make so much money, you should keep this car clean. She doesn't even fucking know this guy. She doesn't even fucking know him. She's making all these judgments. And then putting her judgments onto him as if it's his responsibility to live in the way that she deems appropriate. You know what I mean? The fuck out of here, man. 
I don't know. It's complicated, bro. People are, you know, anytime you have more than one person in the same environment, it just gets complicated. Where is the line between letting people live lives the way they want to, but maintaining order? How do you do both at the same time? You got to let people do what they want to do, but you can't let them break the rules. And in order to do that, we have to create the rules, first of all. And who's responsible for creating these rules? How do we decide which rules are going to be maintained, which ones are not? The, other, the interesting thing about that is the rules change over time. A hundred years ago, it was illegal to smoke weed in California, but it's not now. You know, so sometimes like even stuff that we think is okay now, it won't be okay in the future and vice versa. It used to be legal to own slaves. Nobody was breaking any rules. And now it's, you know, technically illegal, but still very much present uh, in the world. But I, obviously that's besides the point. I'm just saying it's complicated, man. How do you maintain order while granting people freedom? And to me, I don't have the answer, but, you know, uh, one thing I propose would be responsibility. I think this is the main issue. Because if we have rules that, you know, limit or stop people from doing things that are obviously harmful to others, then that's great. Other than that, let people be free and do what they want. The problem is we've, we've tried so hard to separate responsibility from freedom. People think that true freedom is doing anything you want all the time. And I don't necessarily agree with, with that concept. I think freedom in the context of society, in the context of civilization means that you have to adhere to a certain level of rules and guidelines and procedures. Otherwise, it's just, we have no civilization. That's what it means to be civilized, right? Otherwise, it would just be anarchy. We would have no reason, you know what I mean? Like, it wouldn't work. Society wouldn't work if we didn't have rules. So those are necessary. And it also wouldn't work if nobody were free. So a place in the middle, if you ask me, is giving people certain levels of freedom but then it's up to each individual to take the responsibility to live as a decent human being and follow those rules. But then it gets even more complicated because there are some times when breaking the rules is totally justified. You know, it's like really, uh, we could get so deep into the nuances and details of everything I just said if we really wanted to. Which is why I encourage you guys, man, um, to start conversations like this on Discord or with your friends and family to write about it in your journal. One of the things I love most about this podcast and what I always try to do in most episodes is give you something to not only think about, but discuss. I just get the impression we're not talking to each other enough inside of our own homes, with our friends and family, with our girlfriends and boyfriends, with strangers on the street, you know, people on the bus, on your ride to work, whatever, man. I think like one thing that would really be beneficial to all of us if we just started talking to each other a bit more and more importantly, listening to each other a bit more. And so I guess I'll end this episode by saying, man, don't just turn it off and go back to what you were doing, but take some time today or during the week to write about this shit or talk about it with somebody or start a chat on Discord. We can discuss this in the next group, in the next group chat or group call or whatever you want to call it and uh, get into the details because it's a really interesting subject that, like many other subjects on this podcast, affects all of us on some level. You know what I mean? So, um... Yeah, just something to think about and then talk about, my friend. But uh, we have arrived at the end of the episode. So I want to thank you for your time and your attention, my friend. Thank you for supporting this podcast as well. I mean, every little bit of support that I get from y'all really makes all the difference in the world. And I wouldn't be able to do this without y'all. So thank you very much for supporting Real English Radio. Congratulations on taking the steps necessary to improve your English in a practical and interesting way, man. Um, I just really want to stress that I appreciate y'all, man. I really do. Thank you for your time, attention, and support. Thank you for listening to Real English Radio. I am your host, Tony Kaiser. <laughs> and I'll talk to you soon. Peace.